that. So, by the end of today, when you leave or before leaving, I hope everybody can answer themselves honestly and be able to say who commands your life. So, Okay, so my Bible says, Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please the commanding officer who enlisted them. Okay, you may be seated. Okay, so if we, that specific verse that we have, I split it into four parts, okay? So in this verse, the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy, he says, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So the first point I'm going to cover is the soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, what is a soldier? Yes. A soldier is somebody who doesn't, doesn't be tired and constantly. Good. So uh, Christopher said, a soldier is someone that doesn't get tired. They endure. Anything else? What is a soldier? Anybody else? Yes, Faith. Good. Faith said, a soldier is somebody who fights for their country. I found a definition online. Please listen to every word I say. I have specific reasons for everything I have picked, and hopefully it will tie up for all of you by the end of today. The definition I have is, a soldier is the man or woman who fights for their government and carries the weapons, risking their life in the process. The word comes from the Latin word solidus, which is the name of the gold coin used to pay soldiers to fought in the Roman army. Soldier is also a verb that means to serve in the military or to continue on through difficult times. Guys, the Bible is simply about a king, a kingdom, and a royal family. Okay? God's original purpose was to extend his heavenly kingdom in heaven back here on earth. God created you and I to be part of his government extension, dominion over the earth. God's goal was to colonize the earth, to fill the earth with the culture of heaven. That is what colonization does, okay? When a kingdom colonizes a territory, they just take over. It fills that kingdom with its culture. A colony is a territory ruled by a kingdom that is far away. Remember that. A colony is a sorry, a colony is a territory ruled by a kingdom that is far away. Right. And God's purpose was to colonize earth for the heaven's culture to come on earth. That is the kingdom. That kingdom impacts a colony of the culture until it looks exactly the same. Whatever happens in the kingdom is manifested in a colony. So let me make you help make that sense. Let's say the United Kingdom colonizes a country like Congo. Okay? Congo will become just like the United Kingdom. First of all, the language we will take over, people in Congo will start speaking English, we will start building flats, we will start drinking tea, they will do everything to colonize, to colonize means to copy the exact same culture to that country, is that even though it's far away, it still represents the same country that is far away. God's original purpose was to bring heaven onto earth, not for earth to go to heaven. Let me stop you. There's a reason I made you say the Our Father prayer. And I'm going straight into that. For you to understand why the Lord Jesus left the Our Father prayer. Why you, as a soldier, I told you soldiers serve a government. I want you to know who is your government. So who are you serving as a soldier of Christ? Okay? Right, let's go. Okay. So that is why Jesus says in the Our Father prayer, He says, Our Father who art in heaven. Remember, I said a king. A kingdom that colonizes is 
It's a king that comes from far, far away. Okay, the king doesn't have to come, but he wants to colonize. He wants to bring heaven's culture onto earth. So Jesus is praying. Listen to him carefully. He says, Our Father who art in heaven, your king is in heaven. He's colonizing your country. Okay, and he says, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. For the culture of heaven to come down upon earth. We are serving the government of God up on earth. That is the reason, the sole purpose of the Our Father prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, your king is in heaven. Your king wants you to bring the culture of heaven down to earth. Your king wants you to colonize the earth. The earth is for you to colonize. That is what the king wants you to do. Are you understanding me? Someone following me. Am I making sense? Right, I'm going to go very slow. There's specific reasons I've picked everything I have said. There's specific reasons I've picked definitions. Remember, you're a soldier who serves your government. Who is your government? I want you to understand by the end of today, I want someone to be able to tell me who is your government. Who you as a soldier of Jesus, who are you serving? Who is your commanding officer? Are we getting me? Yes. Making sense? Yes. Right, let's go. Okay, right. So Jesus never prayed for you to get to heaven. Is that confusing? Jesus wanted heaven to come to earth. That's simple. To colonize. We are supposed to, we are in this world and we're supposed to bring heaven on earth. Who here has brought heaven on earth? Who here believes they live the same way heaven is set up? The way God wanted it to be done. Who's colonized God's world? Who's copying the culture? First of all, who knows what cultures exist in heaven? Because like I said, if the United Kingdom went over to Congo, first we start speaking the language. Do you speak God's language? They will copy the construction. Are you constructed in the way God you want you to be, young people? All right, let's continue. Okay, right. Okay, so I want us to open our Bible in Genesis 1, 26. Okay, so Genesis is the first book of the Bible. So you don't have to go very far. Okay. Right, so listen again. I need you to read every single word I'm giving you to read today. I need you guys to pay careful attention to it. Okay? Right, okay. Then God said, let us. Remember that, guys. Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. God created man to have dominion. The word dominion is from a Hebrew word called rada. Okay? Rada simply means Kingdom. Another word for Rada is to govern. Another word for Rada is to rule, to control. Another word for Rada is to manage, to master. So you here on earth, are you governing the earth? Are you ruling the earth? Are you managing the earth? Are you leading the earth? God said, you all the above, dominate the earth with my culture. God created us to have dominion over the earth. It is in your nature to lead. That is why you hate you as human beings. Hate being told what to do. Even as young children growing up, your mom can tell you to do something. It could be something simple. Ah, leave me alone. You just don't want to do it. Because you are created to lead. So the, you are born to lead. God wants you to lead on earth. God wants you to bring heaven's culture on earth. Man was never created to dominate other men, but to dominate the earth. Another definition of a soldier that I found, apart from serving your government, is a soldier is a member of a military organization generally tasked with aiding military defenses with an army. A soldier may have dozens of different jobs, each of which requires specialized training and aptitude. Some of the many jobs a soldier might train for include combat positions, engineering, medicine, intelligence, and careers. See that? A soldier has more than one gift. Each one of us on this earth has more than one gift. 
A soldier doesn't just fight. A soldier could be a doctor. A soldier could be a singer. A soldier could be a dancer. A soldier could be anything. We are all created with different gifts. We are not all the same people. You need to know as a soldier, what is your gift, young person? What do you have? You do not live your life to copy others. You are born a winner. Does no one believe me? I need you to really, really understand. If you are born a winner, a winner, a winner, a winner. Everyone in this room is born to lead, not over people, but to lead in their specific gifts given to you by God. Okay? Right, okay. A soldier is also someone that is willing. As we all structured military units, soldiers are instructed to obey their commanding officer and follow orders. While Jesus is ultimately our commanding officer, he will not force his soldiers to accept his missions. That is why you have free will. Jesus will not force you. A soldier of Jesus needs to be willing. You have to be willing to pray. You have to be willing to worship. You have to be willing to follow Jesus. You have to be willing to let Jesus be your commanding officer. Jesus will not force you. Jesus will not push you. It is your gift. He gives you free will. You have that choice. You have that power. You have that option. It is for you. It is for you to make that choice. Is someone understanding me? Yes. Okay, fine. Other thing. You know soldiers train. So can someone here tell me where do soldiers train? Yes, Mr. Bird. Don't worry, anyone else? Where, where do soldiers train? Yes. Yes, exactly, military camp. Soldiers train in a boot camp. Now you, as a soldier of Jesus Christ, please tell me, every soldier has to train, you have to remember that. You can't become a soldier without training. So you, as a military, uh, a soldier of Jesus, where do you train? Where are soldiers supposed to train? Can someone tell me where are soldiers supposed to train? You, as a soldier of Christ. Jesus called us to serve him through the church. We are called to be members of his body in the church. His church is our spiritual boot camp. The church is your boot camp. That is where you go to train. You do not go to train anywhere else. Don't let no one lie to you. You need to go to church. I know some people say I pray at home. Did it? Praying at home is not training. That means you're missing out on your training. You're not a soldier if you do not participate in boot camp. You will not be allowed to go to war. You will not be allowed to do anything for Jesus. You need to be in a church. You need to be you, soldier of Jesus. You need to belong to a church. Don't tell me nothing else. You're not training. Don't call yourself a soldier of Jesus if you have nowhere to train. How does that make sense? How do you get endurance? How do you get stamina if you're not training? Young people, we have issues. Young people today do not like to go to the church. I will pray at home. I will read my, my apps. I will do this. That's not what Jesus asked you to do. Jesus went to the church. He's, he's our commanding officer. He's culture. Jesus came to earth. He gave you, showed you his culture. And I'm getting to that. You'll love that bit. He came to, to earth. Jesus came to earth. And Jesus showed you, I look for my officer, I go to church. These days, parents suffer like this to get their children to go to church. Yeah. And how can you be a soldier if you don't go to boot camp? The church is your only place that you can train. You cannot train anywhere else. Am I making sense? Another important aspect to a military is the chain of command. Listen to this. Our Lord Jesus himself did not perform his ministry alone. Instead, he enlisted other followers and gave them authority and responsibility. So Jesus gave you authority. I'm getting to that. If you don't believe me, you have so much power. You don't even understand. But I'll get to that, okay? He gave you authority and responsibility. Okay, and then it is through these followers that Jesus left, we have the New Testament. Imagine Jesus didn't leave these people, we wouldn't have the New Testament. Through these inspired writings in the New Testament, we can easily form a chain of command for us soldiers today. 